Let's talk to security expert Dennis Amakri, who joins us live from New York. I'd like us to look at the policing angle to this development, Mr. Amakri. Um, most of the arrests uh, happen after the deed has been done. What does this say about the intelligence gathering capacity of uh, our security agencies and their collaboration with the communities? Uh, thank you for having me. You know, um, in situations like this, it's supposed to be a secret thing. It's supposed to be an undercover uh, situation and uh, maybe deep in the bush where people go and uh, do sacrifices, either for money or for other things like even politics, because we're going to see more of that this year. Okay. A lot of politicians are into these rituals, you know. So um, usually you don't catch them before the event. Uh, you might catch them after the event. And then, of course, that uh, depends on very good intelligence guys. So apart from a situation where someone gets hurt, um, how do you deal with um, an individual trying to get money through sacrifice, uh, particularly if um, no clear offense is committed? Uh, well, uh, there is a clear offense committed. Murder. Murder is the offense. And uh, I think um, when you kill somebody, I think the death sentence is also there waiting for you. Uh, but usually, we either see the dead bodies with parts missing from the person, and uh, we don't know who has uh, done it. Uh -huh. But um, I think diligent investigation, intelligence gathering, I think is what we will need. And when people like that are caught, they should be prosecuted and made an example. Because many people, because of maybe the economic situation, a lot of people are trying to uh, or should that short court, you know, to make sure they get money very quickly. Have we identified why there is such um, high moral decadence uh, when you see teenagers who are supposed to be in school thinking of how to get money in, you know, the most shady means? Is, is that a challenge that we have clearly identified? Is it a situation with our economy or we have just lost touch with our values as a society? Um, I think uh, our moral uh, decadence, the moral decadence in the country has risen up to a very high level. Um, our, our morality is upside down on its head. And then, of course, the economic situation, unemployment, you know, and where you find out people trying to uh, make ends meet. Um, and you find out that a lot of people uh, go to churches, look at our churches, they are filled up because poverty is there and people are hoping on, uh, uh, on their faith, you know, for something to happen. And then of course you have these boys who don't go to school, they see other, a very small se segment of society driving uh, big cars, Range Rovers, Mercedes Benz, so they feel that um, they should even uh, go in there and get something out of it. When you look at it, even Nollywood is not helping us because Nollywood has been showing the way of how people will go in there, make money and come out. So um, the, the situation in the country, I will call it a national threat, you know, a national threat um, of our young people who wants to get rich quick. So when you hear members of the House of Reps asking for a situation of national emergency, what comes to mind? Because um, um, there's a state of emergency on everything, insecurity, poverty, education. What precise response would you expect from government at this time? I would, uh, in fact, I'm happy that it is the House of Reps people that are talking this. They should do something about the economic situation in this country. They should do something about poverty, you know, and they have to do it because if they don't do it, they are taking a lot of fat salaries home. And then, of course, uh, people are looking at them, seeing them. A tout in the village goes to the house and then tomorrow you find out that he's coming back with uh, cars and this building houses and these same people are the people that are saying that they want to do something about it i will support them to do it 
Because if they don't do it, it may even backfire. I think that's why they are very, very much worried that they are talking about it. Say something if you see something. That's usually the slogan with the police. But the trust deficit between security agencies and the people is also um, a major threat. How do you, how do we marry this? How do the police get um, all of the information they need before these offenses are committed? Uh, at the same time, when the people do not really trust them. Uh, yes, because that trust deficit is a very big problem. Um, the police should deliberately do something about it because we'll be saying it. If you don't talk to the people, if you continue to behave as if you are protecting colonial masters and now you are protecting uh, uh, politicians and you are not thinking of the people, then there will be this trust deficit. You know, so we would want them to go nearer whether you want to do it uh, by community policing or you want to do state police where people who from the neighborhood are in the police and that way they can get more information because if somebody is doing money rituals one which doctor is doing money rituals in the bush i think some people in the village should know about it and then of course try to track them down and then stop it because uh, you know this this particular poverty and then of course the distrust that exists between the police people don't care anymore they just hide and go and do what they have to do hoping that tomorrow they will become millionaires and stuff like that but intelligence gathering is very very key in all the 774 local governments we have dss officers and they all should go down into the into the grassroots and see what they pick out Security expert Dennis Amakri joins us live from New York. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much.